The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Early one afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto were traveling at a leisurely pace through the rock-studded hills of southern Kansas. Suddenly, the masked man exclaimed, Toto, look. Ah, uh, fellow on trail ahead. He's been hurt. Come on, Phil. Come on, Phil. The Lone Ranger raced to Pete Higgins' side. Oh, oh easy, sir. Oh, easy, 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 easy. We need our medical supplies, Toto. Uh, I'll see how badly he's wounded. Yes, but he's hurt badly. Uh, uh, bullets hit him in the head and shoulder, huh? It's a good thing we found him. Another half hour like this, uh, and he might have... Him loose, plenty blood. Dirty skunks. Bush like me for the railroad money. <laughs> what him say? Uh, he mentioned bushwhackers. Uh, he cut his shirt from shoulder wound. Good, I'll take care of his head wound. Uh, who? Uh, him open eyes, uh, Mr. Oh, what take it easy, stranger. What? Toto and I stopped to help you. you. You were a crook. That's a natural mistake, friend. Shut, Rob. Nothing left to steal it. Uh, him lose consciousness, Miss Abby. Yes. We'll camp in the hills and take care of him until he's strong enough to be moved to town. Uh, Miss Abby. Meanwhile, we'll do our best to find the man who shot him. As the masked man and Tonto bandaged the stranger's wounds, the gunman who had ambushed and robbed him neared the lazy S ranch house. Oh, 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 oh. Steady now, boy. When they reached the corral, Jake Black pointed to a fine palomino. Hey, look, Lucky. Yeah. The boss must have gotten back from Fayette. Yeah. Hey, Jake, Lucky. Oh, it's windy. Heading this way on the double. The boss wants to see you too pronto. He at the house? Yeah, he got back from Fayette an hour ago. And he's plenty riled. About what? The law hung his brother Scar. Uh-oh. Hey, where you been? Looked all over the place for you. Yeah, we went to town for a while. Well, you better get the ranch house fast. The boss wants to talk to you, Cactus, Baldy, Juan, and me. The others are there now waiting for us. I wonder what's on his mind. Jesse Ransom, the owner of the Lazy S, 
had murder in mind, a murder for which he was willing to pay, as he explained to the hard-faced crew of men assembled in the ranch house living room. I did my best to buy and bribe my brother out of that hanging. I went to Fayette carrying $25,000. I'd have given the warden every dime of it to save Scar's life. But it was no use. They hung him, huh, boy? Yeah. I left territorial prison swearing I'd get the men who put him behind bars. He was captured by a masked man and Indian. Yeah. Lone Ranger and Tonto. Well, if Scar hadn't killed two guards trying to rob the Wells Fargo office in Dodge City, he wouldn't have hung. I took $25,000 to Fayette to buy Scar off. Yeah, that's right. I, know. I brought that cash back with me. And I'll pay it to any one of you who brings me the masked man and the engine. Hey, but before you get any ideas of going to the law with the story of my offer, remember one thing. I've got enough on each of you to send you to prison. Yeah. But we don't know where to find the Lone Ranger town. Finding him is your job. Killing him is mine. All you got to do to earn $25,000 is find the Lone Ranger and Tonto and bring them to me. As Jesse Ransom's men filed from the ranch house living room, Jake took the stolen watch from his pocket to check the time. Ransom's beady black eyes flashed angrily as he snatched the watch from Jake's hey, hand. Timmy, hey, what's the idea? Where'd you get this watch, Jake? Well, I bought it. You're lying. I bought it in town. I've seen this watch lots of times. Pete Higgins' initials are in the back of it. You see them? Well, I... I bought it from Pete, boss. I've I heard him say his mother gave him this watch on his 16th birthday. He'd die before he sell it. You'd better admit the truth, Jake. You stole it. All right, I stole it. What else did you get? Some cash. I know Higgins too well to believe he gave up without a fight. You must have shot him. Boss, look, I didn't... Ah, mean... don't worry about me turning you over to the law. I just want to be sure you won't be caught. Well, he doesn't know who shot him. You... You mean you left him alive? Well, he was hit bad. Was he dead? Well, if he wasn't killed outright, he couldn't have lived long after we left him. Where's the body? On the trail to his place. Oh, you chuckheads! What's wrong? Why didn't you get rid of the body? What do you mean? Well, if you buried him somewhere, the law couldn't prove you killed him. Without a body, no one can prove murder. Yeah, yeah, I never thought of that. You better start thinking, Jake, or you'll end up like Scar. The end of a rope. Come on, Lucky, we'll get rid of the body. Yeah, the sooner the better, I reckon. You reckon right. I hope no one's found it yet. Oh, uh, before we leave, boss, I'll take back that watch. Uh, don't worry, I don't want it. That watch could hang you. I'll not make the mistake of flashing it again. You're local if you keep it. You're the only one who knows I got it. Come on, Lucky. Yeah, I'm ready. So long, boss, and thanks for the advice. You can uh, return the favor, Jake, by bringing me the Lone Ranger and Tonto. <laughs> That's easier said than done. Early in the afternoon, Jake and Lucky reached the place on the trail where they ambushed Pete Higgins. Oh, 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 oh. Go down, boy. He's gone, Jake. Someone must have found the body. I hope he was dead when I found him. Well, this ground's too hard to show tracks. Take us a week to follow a trail. Whoever found him might have taken him to town. Yeah. We'll go there and ask questions. Right. Get up. Come on. Get up. Come on. The thieves went to Starville in an effort to learn whether or not a dead man had been brought to town. But no one could throw any light on Pete Higgins' whereabouts. Deeply puzzled by the disappearance of the rancher's body, Jake and Lefty headed for the Sundance Cafe... As they walked along Main Street, Jake shook his head. I don't savvy it, Lucky. No, neither do I. Someone must have found Higgins. He was too badly hurt to walk away from the ambush. Maybe he was. Ah, how far could you travel with bullet wounds in your head and shoulders? Not far, I reckon. No, no one could. But all the same, he's gone. Well, maybe some prospector found him and buried him. Or well, maybe he... What's the matter? Jake, look at the redskin who just threw rain in front of the cafe. Huh? What about him? I know him. 
I've seen him before. Oh, so I've more to worry about right now than a stray engine. His name's right? Tonto. What? I saw him once before. Tonto? Yeah. The redskin pal of the Lone Ranger. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. to continue. As Tonto drew rain in town, Lucky Layton recognized him. Hey, Lucky, are you sure that's Tonto? Of course I'm sure. He and his masked pal captured a couple of rustlers down near the border. I saw the engine take the prisoners to the sheriff's office. Coming this way. Oh, how, how do you do? Engine? What are you doing in town? Uh, me, you uh, want fine doctor. Oh, well, Doc Rowley lives in the cabin just down the street. Well, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the place with the pine tree in the yard. Oh, thanks. Me go get him. Oh, just a minute. Huh? You're a stranger around here, aren't you? That's right. What's your name? Me, Tonto. Tonto, huh? Well, my partner and I are sure glad we could help you. Um, me go see doctor. What'd I tell you, Jake? Yeah, you're right. I'll bet my share of the cash we get from Higgins at the Lone Rangers around here somewhere. Those two travel together, don't they? Yeah. The masked man must need a doctor and didn't want to risk being seen in town, so he sent the engine. That means the Lone Ranger's sick or wounded. The engine will likely head for the Lone Ranger's camp when he leaves here. Uh. Oh. Wait till the boss hears this, Jake. Why tell him about it? Well, he wants the masked man in town. If we tell him they're around here... Windy Cactus Baldy or Juan might lead us to the reward he's offered for those two. Yeah, but this we still... will lead us to the masked man. We'll capture him and collect the $25,000 ourselves. Now, listen, tangling with the Lone Ranger's risky. For that much cash, I'll take the risk. If you're with me, say so. If not, I'll get him myself. Well, you... Uh, you think we can get away with it? If I didn't think it could be done, I wouldn't try it. All right. I'll go along with you. Now you're showing sense. Hey, there's the engine. He's coming out of Doc's place. Doc's with him. Carrying his bag full of medicines. We'll follow him when they leave town. Meanwhile, in camp where the Lone Ranger waited for Tonto to return from town with a doctor, Pete Higgins' eyelids opened. For the first time in many hours, the rancher was fully conscious. He smiled gratefully as the masked man handed him a drink of water. Here you are. Thanks, mister. Tell me, who are you? Pete Higgins. I own a ranch about six miles from Starvia. I reckon I've been hurt bad. Eh? You're lucky to be alive. Do you know who shot you? Well, I got a good look at both the ranch. One's named Jake Black, and the other is Lucky Layden. They work for Jesse Ranson. Ranson? You know him? Tonto and I captured a killer named Scar Ransom some time ago. I wonder if Jesse and Scar are related. I wouldn't know. What's that? Sounds like a horse and wagon. It's hidden this way. I asked Tonto to bring a doctor from town. Oh, then it must be Doc Riley. I, I don't know who you are, mister, or why you're on the dodge, but you've been mighty good to me, and I won't forget it. We're not outlaws, Pete. 
I'm glad we were able to help you. You see the buckboard, mister? Yes, a heavily bearded man's driving it and Tonto's riding alongside. As Tonto guided the wagon toward the campsite, the Lone Ranger noticed a small cloud of dust rising some distance behind them. He studied it for several minutes and decided his Indian friend and the doctor had been followed. Tonto and the elderly doctor drew rein in the well-concealed camp. This Dr. Sam Rowling. I'm glad to know you, Doctor. Howdy, mister. What in the world happened to you, Pete? This engine came to my place and described the man he and his pal found wounded. I recognized your description. Well, a couple of busy ranches men ambushed me. Toto, watch that cloud of dust. Uh, look like riders come this way. They may have followed you from town. What we do? We'll leave the doctor with Pete and step out of sight. Uh, Unnoticed by Pete or Dr. Rowley, a masked man and Indian moved away from the campsite. They were well concealed by brush and trees when Jake and Lucky cautiously approached the small clearing with drawn guns. As soon as he saw them, Pete Higgins shouted, Look out, Doc! Hey, what, what, Pete Higgins! It, you dirty dry gulch and kill Take it easy, Pete. You're covered. You shot and robbed me. Who brought you here? A masked man and redskin rescued me. How'd you find this place? We followed you and the redskin from town, Doc. We didn't expect to find Pete at the end of the trail. Where's the masked man in Tonto? Right here. Hey, what the... Drop your gun. As Jake and Lucky whirled to face the Lone Ranger, the masked man's Colts roared. Shattered guns flew from the outlaw's hands, smashed beyond repair. That's just a start. Now, if you want more guns... No, no, my gun smashed. Lucky stared helplessly at his empty hand, while Jake snatched a long-bladed knife from a sheath on his belt. I'll kill you. Gripping the knife, Jake charged the masked man. As he sidestepped the attack, the masked man fired again. A silver bullet struck the blade of the knife, splintering the weapon in the killer's hand. All right, you! An instant later, the Lone Ranger swung his gun barrel against the side of Jake's head. The ambusher went down. Good for you, mister. I told that jughead you were too much for us. I want him. Keep them covered, Toto, while I search them. Uh, me savvy. They've got my money, my papers, my watch. Jake's got your watch. You not try fast move. Oh, don't worry. I know when I'm licked. If I'd had any sense, I wouldn't have come here gunning for you two. Why did you come gunning for us? I'll bet anything the rats came to finish me off. We didn't even know you were here. Oh. We came to get the masked man and his engine pal. Hey, what hit me? The Lone Ranger hit you, you mutton-headed idiot. Oh, I wish it had been me. You and your smart ideas. Oh, my head. You talked me into this. It was your idea. Collecting the reward Jesse offered for the Lone Ranger and his pal. Oh, Jesse. Who offered a reward for us? Jesse Ranson wants you and your pal. I don't know Jesse Ranson. You captured his brother, Scar. Oh, so that's it. Jesse's offered $25,000 to the man who gets you and the engine. Why did he offer the reward? He wants to kill these two. Well, great day in the morning. Pete. Did you know the masked man is the Lone Ranger? No, I'm learning plenty. So am I, Pete. Lucky the boss will kill you when he finds out you talk. Yeah. Thanks to you, I'm in too much trouble now to worry about Jesse. Here are your papers, your money, and your watch, Pete. Thanks, mister. We'll tie these men, Tonto, then take them to the sheriff. Pete and Dr. Rowley will travel with you and verify your story about them. Ah, and where you go? To Jesse Ranson's ranch. Set foot on Jesse's place, mister, and you'll stop lead. When you leave the sheriff's office, Toto, come to the ranch. I may need help. Now. When the Lone Ranger reached the vicinity of the Lazy S, he drew rein. Concealing <laughs> silver in a grove of trees, he waited in the darkness for some time. The moon was high overhead when he glanced at his watch. Tonto's had time to reach town. Returning the watch to his pocket, he checked his guns. Then, while clouds obscured the moon, he approached the lamplit ranch house. French doors gave a clear view of the living room, where Jesse Ranson sat at his desk, checking accounts by the light of a brightly burning desk lamp. Lifting the latch on the door, the Lone Ranger stepped into the room. I understand you're looking for me, Ranson. You... For a moment, the startled ranch owner stared wide-eyed at the masked man. Then he reached for a gun. The Lone Ranger's hands flashed to his holster. Don't try to draw. What? what are you doing here? I heard about the reward you're offering for my capture. Who told you? Two of your own men. Why, those dirty squealers. I've got enough on them to tell them all. You'll have a chance to tell the law what you know. 
And at the same time, you can explain why you hired criminals. I've waited a long time to meet you, mister. You killed my brother. I turned him over to the law. He was hung for murder. So you plan to murder me. I have a score to settle. I understand your bitterness, but you're on the wrong track. I have a right to be bitter. Gar was my only living relative. I'm sorry, you're but You're going to be a lot sorrier. Boys, help! That's enough, Jesse. You'll never get off this place alive, mister. You're through. As Jesse spoke, the Lone Ranger backed toward the wall. An instant later, the door opened. Hey, what's the trouble, boss? Step inside and keep your hands away from your gun. A masked man. He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Get him, Wendy. Kill him and I'll pay you. No, no, not me, boss. I'm not trading lead with this gent. I'll tell the lawyer you wanted. I'll see that you go to jail. I'd rather go to jail and risk stopping a bullet. My hands are up, mister. Can't I count on any of you? My guns cover that masked man, boss. Juan Miguel spoke from the French door through which the Lone Ranger had entered the room. The swarthy-skinned gunslinger grinned triumphantly. You'll pay me $25,000 and I will kill him. The money's yours as soon as you pull the trigger, Juan. That's so. As Juan spoke, a gun roared in the darkness outside the ranch. A bullet struck the gunman's shoulder as Tonto shouted. You got your covered. Yes, and I'm here to round up the lot here. It's a sheriff. I'll kill you. Keep your hands up, Jesse. You and your friend are still covered. He brings sheriff with posse, Kimasabi. Good work, Tonto. If what Lucky and Jake said is true... Four of Jesse's ranch hands are crooks. Lucky and Jake tell plenty on the way to town. They told me all about the scheme to kill you and Tonto, mister. If you have men enough with you to handle the prisoners, Sheriff, Tonto and I will be on our way. Four of my deputies have the situation under control. In that case, we'll leave you. Come on, Tonto, I left Silver in a grove of cottonwood trees. We'll get him and head for Oklahoma. Me ready, Kimasami. Adios, Sheriff. So long, mister. And the next time you come to this part of the country... I guarantee no one will be gunning for you. Thank you, Sheriff. We may see you again. I hope so, mister. Well, Jesse, meeting that masked man's going to cost you a lot more than you figured. Right now, I wish I'd never heard of the Lone Ranger. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Morita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Morita brown and serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Morita. Morita Brown and serve rolls. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>